The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Welcome to Here Now, Technology, Toys, and Apps is a topic of tonight's show. We're living in an age where research and innovation for new technology is the cutting edge for businesses to thrive and stay on top. The younger generation seem to be the biggest users of new age technology, often seen to be downloading apps and using the latest gadgets. Recently, a nine-year-old boy from Brampton School uh, was in the news for developing an iPhone app. How amazing is that? Long-time business owners are having to adapt to the new age of technology in order to stay afloat. If businesses are not relevant to today's world, they can expect to sink. Moving with the times is the newest mantra, and for those who aren't willing to find ways to be with the times, will often find themselves sinking. So tonight, we're going to be talking about this. Our guest tonight, first, we're joined by John Kerr, science teacher at Valley Senior Public School. Welcome. Thank you, Urs, for inviting me. It's a pleasure being here. Glad to have you here. So you're a science teacher. Do, they, do the kids call you mad scientist? Well, <laughs> no, no, <yeah>. not usually. <laughs> <laughs> not to your face anyways, right? <laughs> so um, you are here to talk about uh, something pretty exciting, electric cars. And um, for the most part, we've heard of electric cars. And I, I don't know, how popular are those right now? Do a lot of people have electric cars? I don't. It, at the moment, uh, because of the pricing, they, uh, they're not very popular. Um, the, we have uh, three uh, available in Canada right now, the uh, uh, Chevy Volt, uh, the Nissan Leaf, uh, and the Ford Focus. Uh, but by the time you uh, buy the charger uh, and pay the taxes, they're, they're over $50,000. And at those prices, uh, it's, uh, they, they won't become mainstream at those prices. So price is an indication of whether someone's going to buy a certain type of car. Price and quality and what a car offers. Um, and, and for someone who might be thinking about an electric car, price should not be a factor because they're going to be more expensive. But what is the um, what's in it for me factor for someone who might be considering buying uh, an electric car if that's where they would want to well, focus on. I, d I don't think most people uh, realize how much they would save each year uh, by driving an electric vehicle. Uh, the average gasoline co car costs uh, over $12 to drive 100 kilometers. Uh, there are many electric vehicles that can travel 100 kilometers for under a dollar. Uh, families could save uh, five to six thousand dollars each year by driving electric vehicles. Uh, I doubt our government has calculated it yet, but this is money that could go back into the economy, stimulating businesses other than oil and gas. So up front, you're spending more, but in the long run, you're spending less. At the moment, to have an electric vehicle, you, you spend more up front. That's true. Uh, but with, uh, with the uh, um, advancement in battery technology, uh, there's a hope that... Uh, pricing will come down significantly. Um, from, our, uh, from our project, we're trying to show that you can, uh, that electric car can be built at a reasonable price comparable to what, uh, what uh, an average car would cost now. In fact, we're trying to uh, do our project uh, for a budget under, under $10,000, uh, just to show that it can be done. Now, our car will not be state of the art, uh, but it should travel at highway speeds uh, and uh, it, uh, it should have a range of about uh, 50 kilometers. Um, and it should be quite, quite adequate uh, for uh, standard, uh, um, standard uh, commuting uh, within the city. Okay, so um, your school, Valley Senior Public School, um, has partnered with Turner Fenton School, a school in Brampton and um, to build an electric car. So how did you come about this project? Uh, it, it sort of evolved. Uh, last year, my science students did projects on uh, innovations in transportation. And uh, before thinking about uh, building an electric car, 
our first uh, effort to improve the environment was uh, to write letters to the McGuinty government asking why our buses didn't run on biodiesel. Uh, from the projects, we learned that uh, uh, biodiesel is uh, uh, carbon neutral um, and uh, much, uh, uh, much healthier than uh, regular diesel. Uh, and we also learned that uh, they, uh, they use biodiesel in uh, Europe and uh, in many of the buses uh, in the U.S. Um, so, uh, and we, we also found out there's a, there's a plant that produces it in Hamilton. Uh, so we found it ironic that uh, the biodiesel produced in Hamilton was being shipped to the U.S. and not being used here. Um, so McGinty wrote us back. He thanked us. He gave us a government website with some good ideas, like uh, not using plastic bags and buying local produce, but he didn't address the transportation issue. Sounds like you're not happy with that. <laughs> well, that's how we evolved into the electric car project. Uh, we saw some footage on YouTube uh, how to convert uh, a gasoline car into an electric car, and we thought, you know, we'll change our approach and we'll, we'll try this project. Uh, so we, uh, we started calling high schools with, uh, with auto body shops, and after about a dozen uh, schools, we, we finally, uh, I talked to uh, Jamie Barber of Turner Fenton, the shop teacher there, and he liked the idea. So we agreed to uh, try it. So you're, you're converting a gas car into an electric car. Uh, that's right. Um, we are removing the gasoline motor and we're putting in uh, an electric uh, motor and batteries. And is that hard to do? Not according to YouTube. <laughs> um, it's, um, so let it, me guess, you got YouTube playing while you're <laughs> moving uh, things around? Well, at the high school, uh, we, we were making uh, some progress. The, uh, uh, the, motor, the gasoline motor has been removed at this point, and uh, we are still actually uh, looking for, uh, for an electric motor. Uh, so we're, that's our next, our next step. Uh, but uh, uh, there are people that are doing these conversions, mm -hmm. and they seem to work out. Uh, they seem to work out well and be functional, and uh, so that's what we're hoping for at this point. Okay, I just wanted to uh, in, uh, remind our viewers: this is a live call-in show, and we encourage you to call in and say uh, what you have to say in regards to technology or electric cars or uh, any toys or gadgets. Give us a call at 905-595-5483. That's 905-595-LIVE. We'd love to hear from you. You might be a kid, you might be someone who's elder or younger. Just give us a call and let us know. Um, just to continue the conversation, so um, in uh, how many students are a part of this project? Uh, at my school, there are roughly 200 students that, uh, uh, that are, to some extent, part of the project. Um, we rely on our students. Um, they, they actually are, are resources for us uh, just uh, from the people that they know. Um, so, and, and the ideas that they come up with. Uh, so it's uh, um, out of 100 students, if there's one good idea that we can, uh, that we can act on, then that's often enough to take us to the next step. Uh, and that's, uh, in fact, um, while I'm thinking about it, I, there are a couple parents that I would like to thank so far for really helping out. Uh, Kumaran uh, Kupasami and uh, Tatiana McGuire have uh, really helped out an awful lot uh, with our project, and uh, uh, we're making uh, great progress uh, because of it. But it's because of the, uh, um, the um, I guess the the networking that our students um, uh, provide. Mm -hmm. So, how do you come up with funding and materials for this? Um, we uh, we received a five thousand dollar grant from the World Wildlife uh, Fund, and that's in partnership with Loblaws. Uh, Loblaws has donated a hundred thousand dollars to schools working on environmental projects, uh, and our car was donated to us by uh, Meadowvale Honda. Oh. That's nice. Yeah, it was, it was great. Did they give you a brand new car and then from there you took it apart? No, it was a, a used car, but we were uh, very grateful uh, for the donation. And uh, uh, because of that, that uh, got us started uh, right to early in the year and uh, it worked out well. So was when was the start time and when do you project the end time to be? 
Well, we, we got things rolling. Uh, we had an idea that we would like to start this in September, the beginning of the school year. And then uh, uh, once classes got settled in and the, uh, the auto shop classes did their safety and they, they have several weeks of just uh, getting to know the equipment in the shop, um, after that we were looking for a vehicle and fortunately it was just after that time that we were able to get this vehicle. Um, our timeline for completing the project, um, it's, it would be uh, amazing if we finished it this school year. Of course we're aiming to do that, uh, but it, it may carry on into becoming a two-year project, uh, but that's, um, we hope to see it through uh, to its completion. So um, when you're finished, will it drive like a normal car? You said that it should drive on the highway at normal speeds. Right, it should drive at highway speeds uh, and have a range of about 50 kilometers and recharge uh, overnight using standard uh, 110 volt electricity. Okay, um, and so we've all heard about the greenhouse and pollution from exhaust, um, but what are some of the other benefits from driving electric cars? Well, there are many. Um, one thing is uh, our infrastructure is crumbling because of acid rain. Um, Toronto right now has a dilemma with the Gardner Expressway. Uh, it's falling apart and they don't know what to do about it. Um, so driving electric vehicles is one way to reduce acid rain. Uh, acid rain comes from the uh, nitrogen oxide and sulfur dioxides uh, e emitted uh, from burning fossil fuels like gasoline. Uh, so from that aspect alone, driving electric vehicles uh, could save taxpayers millions. Uh, also, health care is a big drain on taxpayers. La okay. I'll uh, have you continue after the break. We'll come back after the break. Stay tuned. Sorry. The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Welcome back to Here Now. We are talking about technology, toys, and gadgets and apps. Um, so uh, before the break, we were talking about electric cars and some of the benefits of electric cars. And I interrupted you. I'm going to have you continue. Please, John. Um, right. Uh, one of the other benefits of electric vehicles uh, uh, from the healthcare aspect uh, uh, right now, healthcare is a big drain on taxpayers. Uh, last year, and I, I just found this out, uh, Canada spent $12 billion on respiratory illness. And a big part of that respiratory illness is caused from uh, ground level ozone, uh, which is produced from burning gasoline. Uh, it's highly reactive with lung tissue, and it's uh, the cause of uh, the uh, asthma for many people and other respiratory problems. So are you saying that it's in the government's best interest to reduce health care costs by investing in uh, environmentally friendly technology such as electric cars? There's savings in all areas uh, from the infrastructure point of view, uh, from the health care point of view, and the individual families would save a lot um, driving electric vehicles. So there's savings uh, uh, at, at every aspect. Um, so you had mentioned um, the Gardner Expressway, uh, which is eroding because of acid rain. Can you expand on that? So you're saying the cars driven because of gasoline um, is causing acid rain? Right. The, uh, the two chemicals, uh, uh, the uh, nitrogen oxide and the sulfur dioxide, uh, those are emissions uh, from burning fossil fuels. And fossil fuels uh, include gasoline. In fact, um, uh, 
from a barrel of oil if, if you, the, the entire barrel of oil, in fact, is a, is a fossil fuel. And the 70% uh, of it uh, is fossil fuels that are, that are burned for transportation. And it's a big portion of that 70% that electric vehicles could eliminate. Um, so the, the acid rain is, uh, it just, it uh, forms when the, uh, when the chemicals uh, dissolve in water droplets and fall down and, and in a relatively short period of time they will erode away uh, rocks, uh, limestone, buildings, bridges, um, our entire infrastructure. And uh, we're just, we just don't have a budget to replace all of it immediately. Uh, so it's far cheaper to take a take the approach that maybe we can slow it down by uh, not burning so much fossil fuel. So aside from this project, um, are the students lobbying with the government to um, promote electric cars and other environmentally friendly technologies? Well, I guess from, from our perspective, um, the, aside from our letters, uh, our initial letters about the biodiesel, uh, we, uh, we did send a few letters uh, talking about how uh, we could benefit from uh, electric vehicles. Uh, but I think likely um, it's, uh, I believe that um, um, if building electric vehicles uh, were mandatory for schools, for example, if it were put into the curriculum, then after uh, after a few years, we would have uh, quite a number of new voting citizens uh, graduating from school that had more of an environmental approach. And they could take that with them and then uh, potentially vote in uh, a government with the same environmental vision. So what will happen to the car once you're finished the project? Who gets to keep it? Uh, we hope to auction it off and with the proceeds uh, put it towards a similar project next year. Um, that's our plan and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, hopefully it will, be, it will happen uh, by the end of this year. Okay, so are, are the students getting a credit towards this or, or is this part of, like, what, is this part of the science curriculum? Um, many aspects of it uh, are from, directly from the curriculum. Uh, in fact, the whole environmental uh, uh, vision uh, comes right out of our curriculum. I should mention that some Toronto students uh, from a college did this a few years back, and uh, they became experts at electric vehicle conversions and formed a company. Uh, and shortly after that, they were uh, snapped up by companies in California, and now still in their 20s, they're earning six-figure salaries. So. I, I think uh, more than anything, um, our project symbolizes what we need to do as a society to make our living conditions better. Um, if a middle school and high school students can accomplish this, then hopefully it will motivate all of us to do something. Uh, it's an example of leadership from the bottom up rather than the top down. Okay. Um, now